Hello again friends, today I'm going to explain nested loops in Java. A nested loop is really just a loop inside of another loop. You often see nested loops within a matrix or matrices, or when we reach the topic of data structures and algorithms. They might not come up for a while. Yeah, this can be any combination of for loops or while loops. Any kind of loop inside of another loop. Let me give you a demonstration. Let's say I would like to print the numbers 1 through 9. I can do that pretty easily with a for loop. So we will create a for loop. I will set an index of i equal to 1. We'll continue this loop as long as i is less than or equal to 9. Then I will increment i by 1. During each iteration, I will display i. So this will print the numbers 1 through 9. Or if you prefer, you can have it all on the same line by using print instead of print line. Then it would look something like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You can even separate them with a the space. After printing our index of i, let's print a space character. And now the output looks something like this. What if you would like to do this code three times, let's say? Print the numbers 1 through 9 three times. Well, you could copy and paste this for loop, then do that two additional times. So we have the numbers 1 through 9 three times. To put each row on a new line, you can use an empty print line statement. Then it would look something like this. A matrix. We seem to be repeating our code a lot. In programming, we like to follow the dry principle. Don't repeat yourself, if you don't have to. Instead, why don't we create a for loop, and stick this for loop inside of that loop. Let's create a for loop to iterate three times. I will create an index of i equal to 1. We'll continue as long as i is less than or equal to 3. Then increment i by 1. All we're going to do is take our code, including the for loop, and stick it within this other for loop. Do pay attention to the indentation. But we have one problem. We're reusing this index of i. You can see that Java is already giving us a warning. Here's what happens. Variable i is already defined in method main. If we have a loop inside of another loop, we can't use the same index. A common naming convention for a nested loop is to use an index of j rather than i. Because j comes next in the alphabet after i. Instead of printing i, we're going to print j. Let's see how this works. And here's our matrix of data. We're printing our index of j three times. After escaping the nested for loop, we have a print line statement here. If I were to get rid of that, we'll print the numbers 1 through 9 three times, all on the same line. Let's put that back in. Nested loops are really good when you're working with a matrix of data. Nested loops come up pretty often in the topic of data structures and algorithms, because we have to loop over sets of data. Now we're going to cover a mini project. We're going to create a matrix of a symbol that a user is going to type in. A user will set the rows and columns for this matrix. We'll declare the following variables. int rows, int columns, and char symbol. We'll need a scanner, so let's declare that. We'll need a scanner. Scanner scanner equals new scanner. Within the set of parentheses, type system.in. Let's be sure to import this class of scanner at the top of our Java file and close the scanner when we're done with it. Scanner.close. We're going to accept some user input. A user is going to specify the rows, the columns, and the symbol we're going to use. Let's create some prompts. Enter the number of rows. I'll use print instead of print line. We will assign our variable of rows equal to use our scanner, use the next int method. Then let's do this with columns. 
enter the number of columns. Columns equal scanner.nextInt. And the symbol we're going to use. Enter the symbol to use. We will assign our symbol equal to scanner.next. And we can use the char at method. Give me the character at index of zero. Let's create a for loop for the columns first. Let me zoom in. We're going to set int i. We can set it equal to zero. We'll continue as long as i is less than our columns, whatever the user types in. Then increment i by one. During each iteration, I'll use print instead of print line. We will print our symbol. Let's perform a test run. Enter the rows. It doesn't matter. We didn't set up the rows yet. Uh, for the columns, let's do eight. Enter the symbol to use. Let's do, let's do a dollar sign. That'd be cool. We have the column set up currently. We should have eight dollar signs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need to repeat this for loop for as many rows as we have. So we're going to stick this loop within another loop. With our nested loop, let's replace our index of i with j. For the outer for loop, we will create a new index of i equal to zero. We'll continue this as long as i is less than the rows, the number of rows that a user types in. Then increment i by one. Let's perform another test run. Let's say I would like three rows of six and I will use an at sign. So these are all on the same line. We should have a total of 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Our inner loop ends after each group of six. I'm going to print a new line. We can use an empty print line statement. Our outer for loop is in charge of the rows. Our inner for loop is in charge of the columns. Let's see the final product. I would like five rows of three, three columns. I'll use an ampersand. Here we are. We have three columns and five rows. All right, everybody, those are nested loops. It's really just any kind of loop inside of another kind of loop. It doesn't matter if it's a for loop or a while loop. We often use nested loops with matrices or when we reach the topic of data structures and algorithms. They might not come up very often, but you should at least be aware of their existence. And well, everybody, those are nested loops in Java.